Hey everyone, in this video we will look at how to use Axios to do the typical CRUD operations, meaning the get, post, put and delete HTTP methods. And let's start off by getting some data. We're going to use this service here, which will give us some fake data. So how can we do that? Well, if we want to use Axios, it's actually an external library, right? So it does not come built in with the browser or in JavaScript. So we actually need to get that from somewhere, right? So you can use npm install or we can use an external host, which is what I'm using here. Right? So Axios is imported here. Now on a side note, when you link to external scripts, it's a good idea to use defer. So you're not blocking parsing of the page. And if you use defer, it will also respect the order. The Axios script will execute before our own script here, right? So then in here we can we can use Axios, right? Because it's been created by the previous script. Okay, so we want to make a get request. We can simply say dot get, right? And then the address, which is this one. Okay, now Axios works with promises. So what we get here is actually a promise. We can consume a promise in two ways. We can tack on dot then or we can write a wait in front of it, right? I have a whole video on promises in JavaScript. Definitely check it out after this one. So I will use the traditional syntax here with dot then. Uh, we can format it like this, looks a little bit better. So Axios will give us a response object in here or just res. Let's log this to see what we get. So I have live server. So as soon as I save here, it will make that network request and we see a response. So if I open this up, Axios gives us a bunch of things, the headers, uh, the something with config. We are interested in the actual data, right? So that's what we get here, right? So if I log rest.data, we get the actual data, right? So that's pretty fast, pretty easy. And uh, we don't even have to parse the data as JSON, right? Because the data will come in JSON format, but Axios actually already converts it from JSON on to normal JavaScript. So we don't have to do that. If you're using the fetch API, you have to do that yourself. That's a step in between. All right, now let's say uh, there is a problem. Yeah, your internet falls out, let's say, or there is a 404 or 500 status cut, right? In that case, we can, we can catch the error and we can do something with that. We can output an error message on the page or show an error component. Here we'll keep it very simple, right? So with the fetch API, if you have a 404 error, right? If you're making a request to a resource that does not exist, in that case, you're gonna get a 404 status code. In the fetch API, we do not go in the catch block, right? So with the fetch API, you, there's a separate way of dealing with this. It's a little bit cumbersome. With Axios, whenever there is a problem of any kind, basically, we go in dot .catch. So you have a nice one centralized place of dealing with all the errors right so i highly recommend you check out my fetch api video next so you can compare all right so this is a get request now how do we submit data right so i want to send this data we use the post http method for that so well we can simply say axios.post. So it's actually gonna be the same URL, right? Because we are still interested in the user's resource, but this time we wanna add something to the user's resource, right? So the server will know, oh, it's a post request. So you wanna add something. So this is the URL. And then of course the server needs to get the actual data that needs to be added, right? And that's simply a new user. We can pass that as the second argument here, right? And then it's actually the same thing. We're not really interested in the response because we're sending data here. Here, but maybe the server sends back a success message or something so we can still uh, deal with the response here and if there is an error we will also deal with it here i'm actually going to comment this out okay so now we have a post i'm going to save here which which will make the network request okay and we actually get something back which is actually um, the object that we sent, but it also created an ID, right? So this is an indicator that everything went well i can also look in the network tab so here we can see uh, well the headers the request payload, right? So the data that we sent, we can see the HTTP status code is 201, right? So resource successfully created. Okay, so that's for a post request. What about a put request, right? So we use a we use the put uh, HTTP method if you want to replace or update one particular resource, right? Or sub resource, because we don't want to replace or update the entire user's resource, but only, for example, the user with ID number one, right? So with put, we need to change this to dot put. And you need to somehow tell the server which particular sub resource needs to be updated or replaced. So if we do this, it, it, well, the rest can actually stay the same because we still want to send this data and the server will understand, oh, you want to replace this particular user with this new data, right? So if we try this, if I just refresh here first, and now if I save here, 
we get the same object back so that looks good but now in network let me double check everything in the 200 range for your status code will be good we can assume that this worked okay so then lastly a delete request now we want to delete a particular uh, resource or sub resource right so we need to change this to delete now we still need to specify which particular user we want to delete but now we're not sending any uh, user so we can just remove this right so you can see they're all very similar if i save this here let's see what we will get we get sent back an empty object which is actually a good indicator and yeah, yeah we can see that everything has worked so these are the four most common http methods that you're going to use in your application all right that was it for this video hope that you learned a lot now if you like the video and you want to become a professional modern javascript developer then definitely check out the full course it has two beautiful real world projects that we built from scratch and you will learn much more like fetch and promises and async await destructuring the spread operator advanced javascript how to structure or architect your projects modern front-end concepts like components state and rendering and much more it's all in there check it out the link is in the description in any case thanks for watching and i hope to see you soon